Wilderness. To me, wilderness has always meant escape and solitude and freedom and wildness. And the bigger the wilderness, the more freedom I can usually find. In that quest, I have explored some of the largest wilderness areas in the country, and I have found solitude in each of these natural temples. But the wilderness trips I have taken in the lower 48 now seem like they were nothing more than training wheels. They can hardly compare to the backcountry that can be found in the massive wild areas hiding in the far reaches of northern Alaska. I first set foot in the 7.2 million acre gates of the Arctic wilderness when our float plane landed on a lake at the Arctic Divide. And as I looked around me at the expansive tundra and the soaring mountains, I felt the first wave of true isolation. As the small plane lifted into the Alaskan sky, leaving us for two weeks in the Arctic, I felt the world leave with it. I felt alone. I felt natural. I felt timeless. And I felt very, very small. The lake where we landed stretched into the distance. Green tundra blanketed the land along the Arctic Divide as far as I could see, and the mountains, treeless and green and capped with fog, towered all around us. The lake, the tundra, the mountains, the fog, every single thing I saw made me feel small, insignificant. I knew I was nothing more than a tiny dot an afterthought on the map of this wildness. And as we trudged through the seemingly endless tussocks and tundra and marshes of the Alatna River headwaters, weathering two days of storms and 40 mile per hour winds, I knew the wilderness would treat me with every ounce of respect that I deserved. When the storms finally showed signs of relenting, we began a 50 mile paddle down the Alatna to our next destination. It wasn't until I watched the rain-swollen river drag my partners away that I finally put my finger on another emotion that had been brewing. I felt apprehension. This solitude, this freedom, this independence, this escape, all these things that I had always wanted were now raw and pure to a degree that I had never even imagined. As soon as we put our boats into that swift water, we were being drawn deeper into a trellis wilderness of grizzly bears and wolves and rapids and storms and countless unknown hazards. It was magnificent, but it was also scary. And for reasons I can't fully explain, the fear made it even more magnificent. The next four days and nearly 50 miles on the river were wilderness the way it was meant to be. We spent hours dragging our boats through shallow braids of the river, followed by rising water levels that brought raging rapids. We saw bear and moose tracks every time we got out of the boats, and we watched in awe as two large grizzly bears foraged in the hills above us. We were elated to awaken one morning to the sound of a lone wolf howling in the distance, and excited when we saw the wolf pass near our camp. We were terrified when a tree that had fallen across the river caused my wife's boat to flip, sending her careening through the cold Arctic waters. And we felt the flush of adrenaline after we rescued her from an accident that could have been life-threatening. And eventually the rain-swollen river leveled into a wide valley and our 50-mile paddle slowed, relaxed, and finally ended as we reached the next stage of our trip. From there, the mood of the wilderness changed as we pushed and pulled and struggled our way through alders and tussocks and marshes. We climbed high above the river valley with views that stretched out to the divide and up to the massive granite spires of the Aragetch Peaks. On day nine, we encountered the first person of the trip, 
and five minutes later we encountered a large grizzly bear from no more than 40 yards away. And if meeting the solo climber had somehow reminded us that civilization still existed, just like that, the encounter with the bear thrust us back into the whims of the wilderness. And soon we were immersed in the grandeur of the Aragetch Peaks. It is awe-inspiring to look up at these massive mountains and realize how few people in the world will ever see them. If a road ran along these mountains, it would be just as packed as Old Faithful or Yosemite Valley. But with the weeks of effort it took to stand among these towering granite spires, we enjoyed the views completely alone. And the views were incredible. The vast wilderness had already made me feel insignificant, but the soaring peaks made me feel even more trivial. The mountains jut out of the valley like giant fingers, and you feel like you can reach out and touch the summits. But the peaks stand just out of reach, adding to the sense of remoteness that dominates throughout this wilderness. And we spent hours just absorbing the massive views. But soon the skies opened again and forced us to retreat from the wind and the rain. The weather grounded flights for several days, but eventually we found our way back to a lake near the Alatna River. And there we waited with mixed emotions for a flight back to civilization. We were torn between wanting to hide from the world forever in this harsh, challenging Arctic wilderness and the desire to eat something other than freeze-dried beef stew. But no matter which one we wanted more, the plane was coming. Vacation was ending, and responsibilities awaited back in the other world. When the float plane finally lifted off from Circle Lake, it felt like we had been plucked from the earth by a small fly. We were still tiny and insignificant as the plane slowly returned us to the world of humans. When we landed in Bettles and wandered around the small village, I felt culture shock. Even though there were probably fewer than 50 people in the entire town, the illusion of the wilderness was shattered by the reality of civilization. But the impact of this wilderness has remained. I now know how remote wilderness can truly be. I now know how satisfying a challenging, demanding wilderness trip can be. I now know the joy of feeling insignificant in a massive wilderness. I now know true solitude and escape, and freedom, and wildness. And I want more of it. Everything else seems so small now. The neighborhood park, the southern Appalachians, even the Rocky Mountains have shrunk. I have seen the Brooks Range, and it has hooked me. All wilderness areas are important, and the soul can find peace in any backcountry. But the Brooks Range has finally made me see that wilderness can be vast, unrelenting, unforgiving, dangerous, and life-changing. 